The arm seed sowing is really quite rewarding, especially when you see the, the, the efforts of look, what you do to put it into the soil, you see them coming up looking vibrant. So I'm going to go and show a few people, uh, everybody a few things about um, how we actually go about sowing the seeds and the important things that we do because it's really quite an interesting field and it's also very important that we get it right. So first of all we start off with a container and a container can be any size, any shape, um, the most important thing with containers that you're going to be sowing your seeds into is make sure they've got good drainage, like this one here, and also they're going to be they're going to bring it up to um, to sow what you need to sow in it, um, and also they have to be clean and tidy. And um, so you wash that out with a high pressure hose first, so it's ready to sow into. As well as that, if you wish to, like some of the bigger seeds that you might sow into, such as nasturtiums or some of your vegetables, these are plug trays and they hold about 60 cells and you can fill those up with a seed grazing mix and plant individual plants in there. And the beauty of these is that you can actually, when the plants are ready, you can pop them out and they come up with the roots intact, so you don't have to um, disturb the roots doing it. The next most important thing, of course, is our media, or our, in this case we're using odor and seed grazing mix. Now the seed raising mix is very, very important because again, it has to be free of weeds, um, diseases. So this, this soil here, that we, or which is actually a soilless media we use, is peat and bark based. As well as that, it's got enough fertilizers and nutrients in there to give your plants, uh, little seedlings, a good start in life. Peat helps keep the, the seeds nice and moist as they're germinating. It has bark to aid the drainage, and it is, um, as I say, it's, it's sterile and it's very good for this sort of thing. So when you plant, you put your, your soil in, first of all you spread it out evenly around the tray. This has gone over a screen so it's nice and fine. And you spread it out roughly with your hands like that. Then you can use a, a piece of wood, a piece of 4 by 2 or a um, piece of wood just like that is all you need. And you start on one corner of the tray and you spread it out across here and you spread it back again. Because what you want is a nice flat um, bit of soil there to plant your seeds into, so it's not up and down. And the reason why you do that, if you have bumps or um, undulating surfaces, what can happen is uh, the seeds as they're germinating, they can dry out more one place than the other, so it just keeps the seeds nice and evenly moist as they're germinating. Then what we do is gently just firm that down, not too hard, but just a gentle firming down with our piece of wood. You push it too hard, you can actually create a pan there where the roots might have trouble trying to get into. So it's really important just to make sure it's nice and level, which that is, and ready to sow the seeds into. Now then you decide what sort of seeds you're going to be sowing. Um, in this case we might do nasturtiums. Nasturtiums are quite big seeds and so they um, are quite easy to sow. Bear in mind if you're sowing root crops such as radishes, parsnip, carrots, they generally do not like going into seeds to be transplanted from there. They generally like to go straight into, into the soil that they're going to be growing into, such as in your garden. They get sown directly in your garden and they get harvested from your garden. This is, these sort of trays and this sort of sowing is for plants that you're going to be pricking out into other containers and then you're going to be planting them in your garden later on. So you're just giving these, these, these um, young seedlings a good chance in life. Um, the station, so these and nasturtiums, um, this is double gleam hybrids, so you, you obviously decide you're sowing these, so you pick these up, and there's two ways of doing this job, you can either make a dispenser out of this, which in which case you just cut across like that, and like that, and these are in foil packs, because the biggest killer of seeds is humidity. And these are properly sealed, so um, all the humidity has been locked out of them. So once you open that, and if you don't decide to sow all those seeds, then you put a rubber band around it so you can sow them at a later time. But in this case, we'll sow all this whole packet because it's much easier to show you that. Now, so we're going to be sowing these nasturtiums, and nasturtiums are really quite big seeds, so... We put those seeds in our dispenser. If you need to also, we sell these dispensers here, the seed sowers, which are very, very handy for smaller seeds. Um, so they, they, the seeds go in there and they run out along here and it helps with dispersion of the seeds so you don't have them all in one pile clump. 
which you don't want to do because then it's very hard to, to transplant them later on and you do a lot more damage to the roots if you've got them all, all together in a clump. Then what we do is we wiggle this packet like this because these are quite big, we'll just do it on this and that has to be reasonably flat there because these are round they might tend to roll so I might just have to put it down a wee bit so hopefully you can see that and you start in one corner and you just have those seeds just sit at the tip of the tray and just let them run off like so. You go backwards and forwards, and you start here, and you go backwards and forwards this way. This is the same with all seeds, whether they're large or small. Oops. And you're trying to distribute those as evenly as you can. Now for that tray, we could, could have probably put all those seeds in about half that tray. But it um, depends on whether you want to sow other things. If you want other trays, other parts to sow as well, you can put a dividing line in here and sow nasturtiums on one side and whatever you want to sow on the other side in the same tray, just so long as you don't have contamination from one side to the other. So, so. Yeah. With seeds that are more than two mils in diameter, what we do with those is we need to firm them down because when the radical comes to germinate from the seed, it's the root and it comes from the seed and it wants to find its way into that soil. So we need to anchor these seeds in so they can get a good start. If we don't do that, what will happen is that the, the radical will come out, the root will come out, and it will push the seed out of the ground. So we need to anchor those seeds in gently. So again, we use our piece of wood, and we just push those gently into the ground. Not too hard, again, just gently into the ground. And now, if with some of these big seeds, if they are put too close together, you can separate them at the same time. Which we'll take a close up of soon, so you can see. You can't do that with finer seeds, so with finer seeds you have to be a little bit more um, fastidious with sowing. Now, once we've got our seeds sitting like that, um, we need to cover them with a wee bit of soil. Now bear in mind with a seed, uh, with, with covering it with soil, if it's um, two mils in diameter, you need to cover it um, double that, so it's four mils. So these ones here need a fair bit of soil, but because they're the, um, soil cover on top, but because we've packed them in, we'll be putting probably about half that rate of um, seed raising mix on top of them. But use the same seed raising mix that you had to fill your tray, and we're going to use um, one of our proper sieves that we sell in retail, but for what you, you can use a kitchen colander if you're not do, doing it very much. Just something that gives you the even distribution of the soil around because when you're putting your soil around you want it nice and evenly around the seed. So some seeds take a lot of energy to germinate through the soil and if you put too much cover on they're not going to make it to the top of the surface. So it's really important to keep that, um, that cover even. So again, we use our seed raising mix. That on there. And you don't need a lot. Much, Just put in what you need, otherwise you're cutting around a whole lot of soil. Now I'll put that up a wee bit so you can see, but basically when you're doing this you start in one area. Just get, I like to keep, keep all the soil in one area of the sieve so I've got a bit more control over it. And you put it backwards and forwards, start on this corner, in this case, and you go across the top, again, back again, back again. And that's the good thing about the soil, because it's so fine, you generally use most of that. Now that can be used around the garden if, you're, if you've got left over it, it's really still quite good, it's got some nutrients in it as well. You could use it for um, your veggie garden, house plants, trees and shrubs or anything. Now that, basically because that is, um, we're just going to put that in there. We haven't quite got enough, so we'll just use a wee bit more. I thought it might be enough of that. So we've got back to here, so we're going to start again, now backwards and forwards. Now that, when you're doing this, you look at the size of your tray and you should have an even amount of soil all around, all around the size that we have. So, that being done, then we use a broom, like a half broom, and just gently brush it off. Never brush it into the middle because again, it's going to cause in a lot of unevenness in, inside your tray and again, some seeds might need a lot more energy to germinate, so they might not make it to the surface. And you brush that off gently like the stove. And that's how the product should look at the end of it. Then we label it. Now label is very important because the label will tell you what it is. If you've grown more than one sort of lot of seeds, it shows you what it is, the date it was sown, 
and also um, if you need to what sort of mix or special conditions you use to, to germinate it. So then we write our nasturtium. This is double glean. And sometimes because you haven't got much room to write, I just put DBL for double and glean. So I can write that on there. And the date today is the 11th of the 7th, 19. And that can go either like that in the tray, or if you wish to, because sometimes when you're watering them, they might fall out if they're not very deep, you can put them that way as well. So hard up against the bottom, like so. Now all seeds need humidity and water to grow, so now we're going to give these plants a very, these seeds a very fine watering. Now we're ready to water the tray, so when we come to water our tray, generally we use a, a very, very fine um, water, watering can, such as this. Or if you want to, you can use a very fine rose that, that you can buy from the, uh, I think it's a Gardena rose, um, that goes on a hose. But if you're doing it, you have to make sure you have just a very, very gentle amount of pressure going on it because it's very easy to wash that soil that's sitting on top and the seeds away. And if you do that, you're, you're, um, you're defeating the purpose of doing what you're doing. So, basically what we'll do here is use a watering can. And before you do it, make sure you move all your seeds away because as I said, <laughs> moisture kills seeds. So, so you move, make sure you move all your seeds away, because that's very important. And you start off again, make sure your rows on your watering cans facing nice and straight and down. And you start on one corner and you have that water going, you go backwards and forwards like that. And you run it right off. Don't worry about the runoff off that because it's more important to run off than having all that water puddling on top of their tray. And sometimes you need to water about three or four times to get that, that water right down to the bottom of the tray. So again. Now because it's a peat based mix, it absorbs water very, very well. And as you can see, it's not puddling too much anyway. It's going straight down. You need to get right down to where those seeds are. And sometimes, we need a fair reservoir of soil underneath so those things don't dry out while they're germinating. And then you can feel it and think, hmm, that's probably about halfway through, so I'll give it one more. And again, before it puddles and falls, goes across the tray, just make sure you're moving fast enough. When you are doing your, um, your growing of your, of your seedlings and they're starting to, to um, germinate, the crucial time is when that radical is pushing out of the seed and if it dries out, that's the biggest problem to you that as far as germination goes, you won't get as good a germination. Um, those seeds will struggle more, and if they struggle more when they're germinating, they're not gonna make as good of plants as, as, uh, as they're older. So the important thing is give them a good start in life, so give them a good watering. If they start to dry out, you'll be able to see, give them, it's probably better to give them more water than less water, especially while they're germinating. Then once the seedlings have germinated a bit more, then you can hold the water back a wee bit. But, while they're germinating, keep them nice and nice and washed. Probably water them at least once a day um, as, as a guide. And in the summertime, you need to water them probably twice a day, just gently. Apart from the seed raising mix that we're, that we're going to be using today, there are other medias we can use in seed sowing, such as um, perlite. Perlite is exceptionally good for propagation of uh, house plants and other um, larger seeds which don't like to have too much water and um, so that can be used to add drainage into, into, the, into the media or the soil that you're sowing your um, um, seeds into or you're propagating it, plants. The other thing which is quite popular and very common is vermiculite. Now vermiculite is a wonderful product because it holds a lot of moisture and not only does it hold the moisture, the, thing, the good thing about this is if uh, it's a good indicator as well. So if your seeds are starting to dry or the top of your soil is starting to dry, it goes from a yellow to a white colour. So it lets you know when those seeds are, requ are requiring more water. So quite expensive, but it's a very, very good product. We use it extensively in the nursery on uh, our plant trays that we grow. The other product um, can be used is pumice, which is a lot heavier, but again, it's a, it's a volcanic product. It's uh, natural to New Zealand. And that's also used for growing uh, seedlings in as well, especially for, especially good for drainage and so on. But today we're going to be using the seed raising mix over the seed raising mix. Now once that's done, depending on the seeds that you're sowing, if they're really warm loving sort of seeds, um, such as marigolds at this time of year, we're in now in July, um, all your vegetables are 
cool other sort of plants anyway, except for your um, corns and your, and your um, pep, uh, peppers and tomatoes. So those would need to be sown probably a wee bit later or need special treatment such as going into a, a propagating box or if you're going to be putting them in the glass house early or um, a, a heat pad because most of those seeds like germinate around about 22 degrees Celsius. Some of your other plants such as your, um, your, 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 your other veggies, they're quite happy germinating at, at a lower temperature like about 12, 13 degrees. So um, with the, bear in mind when you're Sowing seeds, you're sometimes three to six months out of season, so they need the warmth coming into spring to germinate, because that's what they're used to. So, propagating heats or um, propagating beds with heaters on them are very, very good. The other thing you can do if you haven't got one of those is use a piece of glass on top and just have a wee buffer of some like a label or something on the corners and have a piece of glass on top. And that will actually help keep that humidity and um, heat in, and also you might just have to turn it every every day or so. And you just have to have them up off the edge there so it helps with that. And later on in the summertime, if you are using glass, you can put paper on it to stop the, stop the bright sunlight from cooking your seeds. Right, that's a finished article. We've got enough that it goes into a, a place where it's, there's plenty of light and, and warmth and they will start to germinate. In this case, the nasturtiums, they will germinate in about three days. Other plants, uh, other seeds rather, such as um, begonias are about six, um, Four weeks. Um, <clears throat> most of the vegetables germinate. Excuse me. Most of the vegetables germinate in around about a week's time. And when they come up, you'll see them because the, the, the two little cotyledons will come up first, and then from there, you, when they're about that size, they're not too big. That's when you're ready to transplant the seed. So it's a lot of fun watching them grow. Um, I've done it for many, many years, and I still get a thrill out of it. So good luck. Cheers.